It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the LG 32 gk 850 g The OSD is controlled by a joystick on the underside of the bottom bezel, beneath the LG logo, and a little bit to the left. I've got that illuminated um, in red at the moment, and that's just so it's a bit clearer in the video. By default, that isn't actually illuminated at all when the monitor is on, but it acts as a power LED which glows red when the monitor's on. It intermittently blinks red when the monitor enters a low power state, so when the signal to the computer is lost. Just to the, the right of that, uh, there's a little scroll wheel just here. And that's used to brighten, dim, and indeed cycle various different colours, activate or deactivate, the sphere lighting feature. So I'll explain a little bit more about that now. At the rear of the monitor, there is a ring of LEDs that runs around the stand attachment point. It runs all the way around. And you can change the colour that that glows. It acts as a kind of bias lighting because it's actually quite bright. Um, this room is, is relatively bright at the moment, and even then I can actually see it on the wall behind the monitor, even when I'm in front of the monitor. I will show you this feature and what you can do with it now. Um, I'll dim the room a bit so it's a bit clearer as well. So if you want to brighten the lighting feature, you scroll that little scroll wheel to the right. If you scroll it to the left, it dims it. If you want to turn it, the light off, the sphere lighting, you just hold, you basically press the scroll wheel and hold it in for a, a little bit. And um, that was perhaps a second or so, it doesn't take long. And again, press and hold for about a second or so and it'll turn on. Note that this, this um, feature actually works even if the monitor is powered off. So once you've turned the monitor off, you can use this as a kind of lighting feature, a standalone lighting feature. Alternatively, you can turn it off like usual. You can actually cycle through the various different settings, um, even when the monitor's off, but it's easier when the monitor's on because it gives you a little prompt on the screen to show you uh, what uh, colour and everything you're actually displaying. So if you press that rather than holding it, you cycle through the different colours. What I was showing you before was what's called white daylight, so it's a fairly cool looking white colour. This is natural white, which is a uh, more of a kind of a slightly warmer colour. It's not particularly warm, but it's a bit warmer. There's Peaceful, and that cycles various different shades, um, which are supposed to be quite sort of calming, I guess. There are lots of different shades. There's kind of different blue shades and sort of teals and some green shades. So it just gently cycles through various different colours. And again, you can definitely see it behind the monitor. Um, so when you're sitting in front of the screen, you can appreciate this feature as well. Most monitors that have this kind of feature, um, or most that I've used, they, especially when they're rear-facing, they're not actually very powerful, so even if you've got them at full brightness, you can't really see them unless you're behind the monitor. So. There's also Dynamic Rainbow. This is uh, kind of a cool one to show your mates and stuff, or um, just if you're in that kind of mood. I don't know, a party mood, I guess. It's quite, quite cool. You can definitely see that on the wall behind the monitor as well. And this one looks quite quite funky from uh, behind the monitor. So if you look at the uh, LED ring itself, you can actually see it cycling through those colours. And different, port different parts of the ring actually display different colours at any given time. So it's quite cool. I, uh, I mean, it's quite cool, but... Uh, I don't see the massive practical purpose in this uh, particular mode because it's quite distracting as well. When I'm actually using the monitor, especially in a dimmer room, I'd actually find that a bit distracting. Red, I quite like this one. This kind of gives a slightly evil red glow around the monitor. And again, you can definitely see that from the front. And I, I like to use this one in the evening. Um, I don't like to use the more sort of blue light, uh, blue settings. I like to cut out the blue light as much as possible in the evenings. So I quite like using this one sometimes if the room's a little bit dimmer. There's green as well. It's a nice kind of NVIDIA green colour. Maybe a little bit deeper than NVIDIA green. 
cyan, magenta, and back to white daylight. So it definitely works as a kind of bias lighting feature. You can see it from the front. Now I'm going to look at the main menu system. If you twiddle the joystick to the left, you can control volume of the integrated 3.5mm jack. You can see there's a headphone icon there. Or you can mute the source of the sound from the integrated jack. If you press it to the right, it does exactly the same, so that's a volume adjustment. If you press it down, you can adjust the brightness. Press it up, again, that's a brightness adjustment, so you can just quickly adjust the brightness of the monitor. If you press it in, that's how you access the main menu system. If you hold it in for a few seconds, the monitor will eventually go off. And as you can see, the lighting feature remains on even though the monitor's off. You then get a little quick reminder of what all of the features do of the joystick and the lighting scroll wheel as well. You can power off the monitor if you want to do it without holding the joystick down for a little bit by just pressing up once you've got into the main menu system. So you can see with the main menu system there are various different options. You can change the input used. You can, um, if you go to the left there, and that just cycles the different inputs. So there's HDMI or display port. If you press down after you've entered this main little quick menu, um, you can activate the game modes or cycle through the game modes, which are the presets on this monitor. So there's Gamer 1 and Gamer 2, which are quite customizable. I'll come on to them shortly. FPS 1, FPS 2, RTS, and reader, and explore these in the review. Um, you can see the various different settings that they all change, uh, or some of these settings that they change. You get a quick reminder of what this all is set to there, and you get a quick reminder of the refresh rate that's currently being used by the monitor. If you've got G-Sync active, um, that actually changes according to the frame rate of the game as well, so it acts as a little refresh rate counter. The reader mode is a low blue light setting, so this is good for relaxing evening viewing or other times where you want to reduce blue light output from the monitor or your exposure to blue light. If you go to the right, there's the main settings menu. Again, starts with game mode, and with Gamer 1 and Gamer 2, these are actually fully customizable. However, the only settings which are actually saved to your Gamer 1 or Gamer 2 profile are these Game Adjust settings. All of the other things, like Picture Adjust, they're actually applied universally, so you can't have different Picture Adjust settings um, on Gamer 1 and Gamer 2. You adjust these once and it applies to both of your Gamer profiles. The FPS 1, FPS 2, RTS modes, they make various adjustments. But they also block certain things off, so you can't activate, uh, sorry, you can't change the black stabilizer or response time, and I'll come on to these shortly. And you also can't change lots of things in, in picture adjust as well, so it's a bit restrictive. And as I explore in the review, I don't really see the practical purpose in FPS 1, FPS 2, or RTS. The other settings are more useful and also more flexible. There's game adjust. This allows you to activate the overclock feature and that will unlock the 165Hz refresh rate. Otherwise you'll be limited to 145Hz maximum. There's no disadvantage that I noticed to overclocking and it's a factory feature of the monitor so it should work just fine. You shouldn't really have any issues with that, you shouldn't worry about using that. There's black stabiliser. And this is a bit like BenQ's black equaliser. Um, I'll open the Legon um, website, the black levels test, and it makes it more clear what this is doing. So it's off at the moment. Um, if you set that to low, it slightly raises the uh, dark shades, it adjusts the gamma curve. So it raises the dark shades so they're a bit more visible, it would improve your visibility um, in dark scenes and gaming, for example, at the expense of things looking less accurate and less atmospheric. 
middle setting boosts that further and high boosts that further again. So this is for users who want a competitive advantage and don't care so much about atmosphere or sort of an accurate look to the game. There's a response time adjustment and that adjusts the pixel overdrive of the monitor, the extent of the gray to gray acceleration that's used. Various different options are all explored in the review. I like faster myself, fast's good as well. And there's normal or off. There's an on screen crosshair feature. And this just puts a little crosshair in the middle of the screen, a very small crosshair, which you can't really see with the. Uh, I'll just change my background so you can actually see this. So the, there's a very small crosshair there. You can change it to various different styles. There's a classic plus cross red, classic plus cross green, a red dot, or a green dot. Or you can have it off, as I prefer. There's also a game reset option, which just resets your game adjust settings to the factory defaults. Next is picture adjust. This allows you to adjust the brightness and contrast of the screen. You can change to one of the three different GAM modes. There's GAM mode 1, mode 2 and mode 3. On my unit, and I think most units, um, mode 3 is optimal, but there may be some inter-unit variation and just play around with these and see which you prefer. Colour temperature settings. Custom, warm, medium and cool. So the warm one kind of gives a slightly warmer than default uh, look to the image, I think. Um, it doesn't really make a massive difference either way. It actually looks a bit cooler than the settings I had before anyway, my custom settings. There's medium, which is a bit cooler, and there's cool, which is very cool looking. And cool looking as in looks quite blue, and not particularly attractive. If you've got custom, you then have this RGB thing, which isn't greyed out anymore and that allows you to manually adjust the red, green and blue colour channels. There's picture reset which just resets things on this menu to the factory defaults. Then there's input that allows you to select HDMI or DisplayPort. Next there's aspect ratio. This applies to non-native resolutions but if you're using DisplayPort um, it uses the all the G-Sync hardware and stuff then you actually are using GPU scaling, so you can't. these features don't do anything at all because it's not the monitor that's using its interpolation or scaling process, it's actually the GPU. So these are completely bypassed, they don't do anything. But if you're using the monitor with HDMI, you can access the scale of the monitor. And if you're running at a non-native resolution, these uh, settings adjust how the screen looks. So full wide would mean you're using all of the pixels and everything's sort of stretched across. It doesn't matter what aspect ratio the resolution you've selected is. They'll just fill the whole screen. Original will use interpolation um, to some extent, but it will maintain the source aspect ratio. So if you've got a 5x4 resolution or whatever it is that you happen to be using, um, it'll respect that aspect ratio. Well, there's one-to-one, -one, and what that'll mean is the image is displayed with a black border around it and you're only using the pixels called for in the source resolution rather than the full 2560 by 1440 of the display. So that's a one-to-one -one pixel mapping feature. Finally, there's general. This has various different options such as changing the language that the OSD is displayed in. You can change the power LED, the little red um, illumination to the joystick I showed you before. You can have that off, which it is by default when the monitor's on, or you can have it on when the monitor's on. You can't really see that, I should mention. You can't actually see it from a normal frontal viewing position anyway, only if you're looking at uh, the monitor from pretty low down. Automatic standby. This means after a certain time that the monitor has detected that there's no signal from the computer, it'll automatically um, go on to standby or as if you've pressed the power button to turn it off. That's what it means. So you can have that set to eight hours, six hours, four hours, or off, which means it won't automatically go into its standby mode. Quick charge, and this enables the quick charge feature of the USB ports, so you can quickly charge connected devices. It uses slightly more power from the monitor, so that's why there's an option to 
um, turn that on or off. And when I say power from the monitor, I mean it uh, uses a bit more electricity. OSD lock, so you can stop pesky family members from messing around with your OSD unless they're clever and they know how to deactivate the lock. Deep sleep, this is a, an energy star feature basically. Um, it's set to on by default. If you have problems with your monitor waking up after your computer goes to sleep, um, then just disable this, set it to off. What that means is it'll slightly increase the power consumption, standby power consumption of the monitor, because it doesn't enter its deepest state of sleep, but it's it's not a massive difference and it's it's just there for Energy Star compliance really, this feature. Information, very certain information. Um, for example, the, the model, the power on time, so the total uh, time that the monitor has been switched on. And that's not in the last session, that's ever, until that's reset in the factory or whatever. The current resolution being run, the current refresh rate, whether G-Sync mode is being used, and that means whether G-Sync is active in the OSD or not. Not necessarily that it's actively being used right now. And the input that's being used. And there's an option to reset everything to the factory defaults. So that's everything, not just the general menu. And again, there is another little sort of information section at the top which shows various different settings, gives you a quick glance. The refresh rate there, I didn't mention before, it does change with uh, G-Sync, I think I did mention that before. But what I didn't mention, it doesn't change in real time, um, it just changes to sort of a snapshot of whatever the refresh rate was as soon as you've entered the menu. So if my game was at 130 frames a second at the moment and I entered the menu, it would say 130 hertz, even if the monitor's refresh rate is constantly changing in the background according to the frame rate. Hopefully that made sense. So that's really all there is to the OSD, on-screen display menu system of the LG 32GK850G. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video, as well as information about how you can support the work that we do.